Good morning, my loves. This is Deborah, and as I promised, I told you guys that I was going to share my life story with you. And today, I decided that I was going to read you guys a letter that I wrote to my mother a few years ago. Um, it's called A Letter to My Mom. It's kind of long, but it shouldn't be any more than maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes of your guys' time. Um, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. I hope that God has blessed you. Um, we're all are having a lot of difficulties with so much terrible things and trauma going on in the world and um, this is a little hard for me you guys because I'm normally a good speaker however when it comes to speaking on things of my past it gets a little distorted for me but I'm going to do this because again I am here for all survivors of child molestation, abandonment issues, physical and sexual abuse, and I'm hoping that this reaches the people that it needs to reach. I am kind of upset with how things go when it comes to social media. Um, just for example, the Nicki Minaj pics go viral. For what? Why? What impact does that have on the world? There is none. It shows our, our daughters that this is okay. And it's not okay. We need to start focusing on the real and not the fake. So, here it is. A letter to my mother. Mom, first off, I do not write this letter to hurt you. However, it needs to be said. I am constantly reflecting on my childhood, or lack thereof. The only thing I remember is you going to my concerts and my high school graduation and giving me flowers. I don't fully understand why I felt pushed away. I don't remember getting hugs or kisses from you. You did not, in my heart, treat me like your daughter. You gave that responsibility to my grandparents and my aunt. But the main reason I have so much anger towards you because I stopped being your child when you married that son of a bitch and had Marcus, who was and still is the center of your life. You have no idea how it feels to have to compete for a mother's love and affection. What I mean by that is, in your eyes, Angela was perfect even though you compare it constantly about how she's such a bitch and was always lying on you and me and getting me in trouble. To me, I felt like I was a stepchild to you as well as him. I don't think you fully understand how much pain and torture I went through every single day I lived with that man. It only got worse when you left me with him and did not take me with you. I think that was the mo moment that I was on my own. You know what it's like to have a mom and dad, even though grandpa was drunk most of the time, he was there whenever you needed him. Why didn't you feel like, why didn't you let me stay with them when you married him? Why did you let him adopt me? I am so full of hate hate for the mother who should have protected me when I was being hit, smacked, 
felt up, yelled at, made to rewash dishes at 2 a.m. because he didn't think I cleaned them well enough, and sexually abused. Him kissing me as if I was a wife and not his stepdaughter. The man you left me with. Did degrading things to me every chance he got. Accusing me of not going to school. Made me take my clothes off at 14 and 15. So he can beat me with that big black police belt. Made me take off my panties so he can smell them. To check if I was having sex. The man that made me go to Phoenix with him and passing me off as a friend. Making me wear Anne's clothes so that I could look older. And then made me sleep in the same bed where he proceeded to touch me. But with all of that, I hate myself the most because I can't let this go. So instead of hurting the people who has caused me the most pain... Were you, that week, that you couldn't protect the daughter that got beat so bad when he couldn't find his badge that day? You see, Mom, I remember everything. I see him in my dreams. I hear his voice when my husband and I are arguing. And I just shut down because talking back got you another smack in the mouth. I take this pain and anger out. Not on you or him, on my own family and myself. Causing myself pain is no big deal to me since I can't stand the person I've become. A nobody who's done shit with her life. Everyone was always talking to Angela about going to college, making something for herself. When didn't I get the same? I guess when you hear that, you're stupid and lazy so much. You start to believe it. And after 37 years, I still do. I find the reckless behavior that I do is only me wanting to end my life. But you chicken shit to do it. I guess Michael was right. I can't do anything right. I am a waste of air walking on the earth. You don't even know how many suicide attempts I've had. The first one was when grandma died. And when we went back to her house, I took her blood pressure pills. You caught me in the kitchen. And instead of doing what a loving mother would do, is to take me to a hospital. You told me if I want to kill myself, next time, take the whole bottle. Now go to bed. I take numerous pills a day. But my body has grown so used to it that they don't work. I've been abusing since I was 12 years old. I had to in order for me to deal with whatever was waiting for me at the time. 45 years old now and I don't really know what love is since I was never shown. Only people that gave the love and affection I craved was grandma and grandpa. And when grandpa was alive he would even let me go over he wouldn't even let me go over and see him. And then when he died, you didn't tell me right away. I'd even get to know to kiss him and say my goodbyes. Most of my life I have been growing through the motions, smiling when I want to cry, or talking when I really want to scream at the top of my lungs. And hope just one someone hears me. I love my family very, very much, but how can I show empathy and compassion when it wasn't shown to me? I am uncomfortable loving my kids and my husband because I feel I don't deserve them. I can't lay in bed with my son because fear grows. I can't kiss and hug my kids or husband because it invades my personal space. What a fucked up way to live. I never ask much from anyone except to show me how to love in a proper and meaningful way. I am constantly searching, even though it's right there in front of my face. There are two sides of me, Mom. Deborah and Debbie. Debbie is the 
the smiling, laughing, and loving person. But Deborah is the hard, mean, and evil one. Shows no love to anyone. Do you remember a few months ago I called you in Chicago to tell you I love you? And you said, like you always do, I don't have any money. What do you want? And I said, this is... I said this may be the last time you may ever talk to me. You said you're not going to do anything stupid. Now put your husband on the phone. So you can talk about a problem you were having with your computer or conversations lasted about five minutes. You were on the phone with him for about 20 to 30 minutes. Do you know how that made me feel? I didn't mean shit to you then and I don't mean shit to you now. And now you're back expecting things to be the way they were. Well, it's not. I have changed and not for the better. To not have been invited to the family reunion was a slap in the face. What did I do to any of you? Why do I feel like the hated one? I blame you the most, Mom. Because while you were in Chicago, you spent time with him. You went to his condo. You had dinner. Properly talked about old, old times. But not once did you confront him on anything he's done to me. How could you look and smile in his face, knowing that he's the one we're not close. The one reason that we're not close and probably never will be. That was your chance, Mom, to step up and protect me. But why didn't you? Because you didn't want to get Marcus upset? I had it worse than Angela, Mike, Jean, Dam, even Marlon. And they treat me like a plague that spreads infection. I love you, Mom. But if you really love me, you would have protected that little girl that you left with the boogeyman who still haunts my dreams. It interferes with my life. Do you think I'd be this screwed up if it wasn't for him and you? If you want to have a relationship with me, Mom, you have to do this. Because that little girl needs to feel validated and know her mother at least tried to protect her daughter. If not, I don't want to talk to you or see you again. To me, you are non-existent. To me, just like Mike, Marcus, Angela, Dana. This is your only chance. I wrote that when I was 37 years old. I told my mother way before that, maybe when I was about 25 years old, when the PTSD started to set in about what he did to me. And she said nothing about it. I don't have a relationship with my mother. My mother lives less than five minutes away from me. She doesn't call. She doesn't text. I get on Facebook and she's on and she'll drop off. What did I do? What did I do? Was I that bad of a child? Everyone wants to bring up the things that I've done. The drugs, the overdose, the suicide attempts. But no one asked me why. That is the effect that child molestation does. That is the aftermath. And now in France, they want to legalize having sex with children at the age of 13. Can you imagine 
what that will be like. Can you imagine the pain, the emotional pain that these children go through? Can you imagine the one place where you feel safe? Is a horror house? When are you people going to wake up? When are you people going to say enough is enough? I woke up this morning expecting a lot of views. And I appreciate the ones that did view it, the two videos that I put out. I really do. Because at least some of you are awoke. I appreciate the young lady who shared her story with me. I don't know if I'm asking too much. I don't know if some people are willing to step up. I don't understand why in the black community, child molestation is so taboo. But you guys can sit and watch World Star all day. And like it and share it and it goes on and on and on but the videos of people expressing real situations real life it moves it goes nowhere I bet if I was to go live and show you when I'm in, in one of my opioid addictions that will go viral we are losing our children to murder, to rape, to organ donation, well, scratch donation, stealing, bullies, pedophiles, molesters, but yet, no one wants to talk about it. Just a few. Did Kanika Jenkins not open your eyes to what can happen to our children? I don't know if Kanika was molested. I pray to God she wasn't. I pray to God she wasn't. But she's not here to tell us her story. She's not here to tell us her truth. But there are other Kanikas out here that can tell their truth. There are other Jordan Bilbo's out here that can tell us their truth. There are other Samaji Crosby's out here that can tell us 
her truth. How many more babies? How many more children, young adults, do we have to lose? How many more? I'm not into my YouTube to talk about Kanika Jenkins. Because the only one thing that we know for a fact is that she's gone. She's been, he was murdered. Some people want to believe it. Some people don't. So be it. It's your opinion. I'm not here to debate that. I'm here to help the children, the young adults, now. I am here to be with the adult who was abused as a child, to feel comfortable and safe, to speak their truth. That's what I'm here for. That's what my platform will be. I hope that you people will help me and help Hassan Campbell. I am going to uh, try to go live, maybe this weekend, I don't know. Um, it all depends. But I'm not going to stop. I don't care whether I get 5 views, 20 views, 30 views, whatever. At least those views are getting there. People who are interested are watching it. That's all I can ask for. But this is me, guys. This is me. And I am not ashamed of myself anymore. I don't hate myself anymore. I just want to live. I just want to be happy. I just want to have a purpose in life. Because I didn't know what my purpose was when I was a kid. I thought my purpose was just to be abused. To be abandoned. Over and over again. That was my purpose. But now as an adult. My purpose. Is to help other people. That's what I want to do. That's what I have to do. Tomorrow's not promised to me, whether by my own hand or by God's. So the time that I have left in the cesspool that we call a world, I'm going to fight for my sanity, for my peace, and for others like me. Together, guys, we are strong. Together, we can hold each other up. But together, we need to be. Not one or two people can fight this fight alone. We need the help. We need the assistance of more people coming out. Not just the rich and famous, but just normal, regular people like myself. I love you guys. I really do. And again, I'm here. And it's time for you to speak your truth. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. Be aware of your surroundings. 
and I'll talk to you later. Bye.